almost live from the point of Saginaw and Washington streets in beautiful downtown Duran, Michigan. First Congregational Church presents Cafe Depot, a five-minute devotion that fits seamlessly with your day with an encouraging biblical thought designed to lift your spirit and point you to Jesus Christ. Thanks for clicking the start button. God bless you. Tuesday here in beautiful downtown Duran, Michigan, November 7th, 2023. Welcome to this episode of Cafe Devo. Hey, thanks for joining me. I hope our time together will be a blessing to you. I'm your host, Pastor Steve Wood. Most of you know my pal Bugsy. He's usually hanging out over there, but now he's over there. Been there all week. Don't know why. He's just chosen a new spot. It'll change the scenery, I suppose, or <laughs> maybe he's ticked off at me. I don't know. I hope your Tuesday is going well and hope you found some time today to go vote. Uh, I know it's an off year, but uh, many local communities have some important decisions to make. And so go out and do your civic duty and cast your vote today. Once again, today we return to the book Truth for Life. It was written by one of my favorite preachers, Alistair Begg. This is the second volume of Pastor Begg's collection of daily devotions. Copyright 2022. The Good Book Company. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt. Hebrews 8, 8 through 9. When God's people cannot rise to the height of his standard, the Lord does not lower his standard to match their abilities. Instead, he determines to transform his people through the person and work of his son, Jesus. According to the Old Testament practice, every high priest was appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices on behalf of the people. However, when Jesus came to fulfill the role of our great high priest, he ushered in a new and perfect covenant by offering himself as the final sacrifice. By his death and resurrection, Jesus secured a covenant that cannot be broken, a covenant that these words had looked forward to when the prophet Jeremiah first spoke them, Jeremiah 31, 31 through 32, a covenant that transforms the heart of those with whom it is made. But how does this transformation take place? Well, following his resurrection, Jesus ascended into heaven and sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, Hebrews 8.1. This decisive act not only signified that his work was complete, but also initiated the coming of the Holy Spirit. Prior to his death and resurrection, Jesus essentially told his disciples, it is necessary for me to go away. If I'm here, I'm just here in this body and in this place. But when I go, when I send the Holy Spirit in all of his fullness, he will not only be with you, but he will be in you, all of you, wherever you are. And he will take the things that are mine and he will make them precious to you. It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit then to transform and renew our hearts so that God's law will be written on them, so that it will be our delight to do his will, Jeremiah 31, 33. Previously, his law offered only condemnation for it only defined sin, but now it has become our joyful reality to live according to the law, to live in purity and wholeness and faithfulness is now our delight because we love Jesus. The new covenant also enables us to know God through his word. Our knowledge of God does not come primarily through sacraments, a hierarchy of priests or teachers or pastors. Instead, all of us from the least to the greatest can know God, Hebrews 8.11. When we know God personally and intimately in his word, we are transformed by his spirit to become more like him, 2 Corinthians 3.18. I know this is amazing. 
This is the wonder of what Jesus has done as our great high priest. He has secured our forgiveness and has sent his spirit. In what ways are you struggling today to obey God or to really even want to obey him? Pray to him. Ask him to work through you by his spirit to transform your view of his law and to enable your obedience of it. What you could never do on your own, you can do as you keep in step with him and become more like him. For more on this, go to the book of John, chapter 16, verses 5 through 15. O Lord, how very unworthy we are, but your grace covers all of it. We do not seek to obey the law out of a sense of legalism or because we are afraid of judgment. We seek to obey the law because we love you, Lord. So fill us today with your spirit. Guide us according to your word and help us to represent you well by behaving as people who love you. Bless us in this, Father, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, that'll do it for us on this Tuesday edition of Cafe Depot. I hope your day is a great one. I'm Pastor Steve Wood. I love you all. See you.